President Biden says that all schools across the country should be fully reopened in the fall, but guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention this uh, February allowed many schools to stay virtual this year. The guidance allowed for students to be spaced three feet apart rather than six, but also warned against opening in locations where virus transmission was high. At the time, that was nearly the whole country. Now, new information suggests that guidance was influenced by the nation's most powerful teachers union, the American Federation of Teachers. Joining us this morning, AFT President Randy Weingard. Nice to have you back on Good Day New York. Thank you. So what happened with you and the CDC? I think there's a lot of, you no, know, we know each other a very long time and I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what happened with you and the CDC? I mean, there were phone calls between you and the CDC, uh, emails, what happened? So, you know, this is, let me just say this. What the New York Post didn't report was we had more conversations with the Trump CDC in 2020 um, trying to figure out what the heck was going on than we had with the Biden CDC in 2021. The Biden CDC and the Trump CDC used to call stakeholders all the time to try to find out what was going on on the ground level. So this is frankly a story that, you know, is attempting to be a distraction because both lower level scientists in the CDC, in the Biden administration, the Trump administration, the Bush administration, they all were trying to do their jobs. And the email that's being talked about is about, you know, we were having a conversation about accommodations for people, you know, the ADA requires reasonable accommodations for people who are high risk. And we were talking about multi-generational households and what do you do if a teacher is part of a multi-general household and instead of them taking a leave of absence, seeing if we could get an accommodation so that they could, they could still teach. And the CDC said, that's a good idea. And we gave them, and they asked us for language and we gave them language. But at the end of the day, the most important things that we asked, and you know me a long time, what I say publicly, I say privately. What I say privately, I say publicly. Um, and what we were saying is you need to give real guidance for how to reopen schools. Safety is the way to reopen. And what we've seen across the country, which is part of the reason of Joe Biden's success and of Trump's failures here, is that when you actually make, when, when you have safe conditions, like I just saw in Carl Place, which has been open all year long, it creates trust. Teachers trust it parents trust it. And that's what we've seen over and over again. So the CDC under Biden actually created a, a way into schools, which is why less than 5% of schools are now remote and, and everyone but, else. But Rand, Randy, there have been parochial schools open all year. There have been private schools open all year. Study after study shows that the schools are a safe place for the kids and the teachers. What I think many people are concerned are that it was political interference and not science that dictated absolutely, the CDC guidelines. Absolutely, absolutely not. It was the issue, you know, if, if you actually think about stakeholders as political, um, which I don't, teachers in classrooms expressing their experience is not political. And many of those schools that were open, first off, as you know, the private schools and parochial schools, you know, were desperate for the kind of funding that we were trying to get for public schools. And I helped Senator Schumer get that funding for those parochial schools because we know it's important to reopen schools and they were desperate for the same kind of funding. What the parochial and private schools did, the pr private schools in particular, was that they got money early on from the program called PPP for testing. And that's how, just like the NFL, that's how they were able to do that. What has happened in so many places, like a charter school that I am part of, Eva Moskowitz's charter schools, they've been virtual all year long. I mean, I'm not part of Eva Moskowitz's, but what I'm saying is that what you have here is a spin that's not appropriate. The CDC should be and has been asking stakeholders, what are they seeing on the ground? 
And mm -hmm. that is what we reported to both the Trump um, CDC as well as the Biden CDC. Okay, since you mentioned trust, Randy, I know that there's a lack of trust within minority communities when it comes to being in person in the class. In fact, you're even conducting some polls to try to get to yeah. the root of it with the NAACP. So tell us about that. So we should be getting the studies, we should be getting the polling data in a little while. What we're seeing across the country, thank you, Lori, for the question, is that a dis that you see kind of um, uh, more white parents are open to sending their kids back to school and have been um, this um, spring, and more black and brown parents are um, more hesitant about it. You see that in New York City, you see that in Chicago, you see that in LA. And so we're trying to get to the root cause of it. And what we're seeing is, you know, we've gotten some preliminary results back, we haven't gotten all the results back. What we're seeing is that it's the same thing as, as, what, as has happened with teachers, is that if you've been remote for a long time, you are, you know, there's, there's a psychological barrier. You're worried about whether or not schools will keep you safe. So we have to actually get parents um, into schools. The parents that, who have sent their kids into schools and they see the safety protocols, they feel more confident about it. So we're gonna be proposing um, a whole campaign next week that will include things like the open houses that UFT is proposing um, this summer to convince parents to be back in schools. Mm. We are proposing going and doing walkthroughs like I just did in Washington, D.C., your hometown at McKinley High School with the head of the Parents Association, with the chancellor, with the, the head of the teachers union. And so we ended up seeing all the safety protocols, including all the air purifiers, and it creates confidence that right. kids will be safe. All right, Randy, we didn't even get to the snow days being taken away, and the kid's not happy about that at all. But on the you know, this is what happens with, this is what we've learned from remote, you know, that you can actually have remote teaching on snow days. Well, that's good. Are the teachers getting vaccinated? Because we want yes. to make sure there is nothing yes. to stop reopening the schools we're, in September. We're going to, you know, there, we, schools are going to reopen fully in September. There is nothing under current construct that we see that stops that. And so as you know, and, and that what I'm really proud of is that 90% of my members either have gotten a vaccine or um, are willing to get a vaccine. And we're trying to get underneath that 10% hesitancy. Mm. But over as of April 1st, over 81% of our education members had gotten a vaccine and over 86% of our healthcare members, we represent about 200,000 nurses and healthcare professionals who have gotten it. All right, AFT President Randy Weingarten joining us this morning on Good Day. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thanks, Randy.